Hey Westgate Church, thanks for checking out this video. Uh, because you're checking out this video, it means that you've got some level of interest in what God is up to here at our church. Yeah, and we've got some really exciting news to share with you, can't wait to share. In 1952, a woman named Mildred Schultz and her family and a group of small friends, um, they were attending Calvary Church in Los Gatos at the time, but they lived on the west side of San Jose and felt God calling them to establish and begin a Jesus community in that part of town. And so with the support of Calvary Church in Los Gatos and some others and their own resources, they planted and started a church called First Baptist Church of Quito Park, right on Quito Road, right across the street from our current Westgate Saratoga campus. And the very first worship service at First Baptist Church of Quito Park in October of 1952. Um, we have a bulletin, actually, of that service. And the first sermon ever preached in that church was from Pastor Dr. Reverend J.H.L. Hawkins. And the title of his sermon was, Why Are We Here? For 70 years, followers of Jesus on the west side of San Jose, and as Westgate Church has grown into a multi-site congregation here in South San Jose, and with our Casa de Fe congregation along with South Hills, we have been trying to faithfully respond to that question. Why are we here? So today, we're gonna to take a little bit of a journey. Steve's gonna share a few thoughts on where we've been and the early days of his leadership here at Westgate. We're gonna talk about what is next for us and why we sense God is leading us into that next. And then we'll share some of the details and an invitation to all of us as a church family to prayerfully respond and participate as God continues to move in and through our church to respond to that question, why are we here? Unbeknownst to me, in June of 2001, I came along and did a sermon, and the title of it was, oddly enough, Why Are We Here? And we began to ask a question that was pretty convicting for us. We asked this question, if Westgate went away, if it somehow burnt down or, or crumbled and the buildings all went, went you know, gone, would anybody that doesn't go to Westgate care? And we were pretty convinced that the the majority of the answers were no, that it just didn't matter. And so we began to try to interact with our community and become the kind of church that would make a difference. But we had a second question. And the second question came maybe a year later. And the question was, are we gonna stay here? There was interest in our address from retailers and, and people wanted to purchase it. And so we looked around, saw what we could see and see if there's anything out there for us, and decided, made a really firm decision, we're going to stay at this address. Even though it's retail all around us and seems to be squeezing us in, we're going to stay right here at this place. And so what did that look like? Well, it looked like taking our campus and then maximizing it, caring for our kids, having safe environments with our buildings where kids and students would have a place to, to meet, going in and having a place to worship that was comfortable and had good sound. And, and the ceiling was tall enough where Mark could stand on the stage and not be too tall. I mean, it was just all those kinds of things. And so as we laid it out, we were just completely intimidated by what it would cost. But a group of people many, many years ago decided to step up and take the generational challenge of maximizing the campus and doing what they could to make it a place where we could stay, where we could be there for our community for a long, long time. As we think about Steve's journey and the journey of this church long before Steve and Dana, going all the way back to the 50s and Mildred Schultz and her family, again, coming back to that original question, why are we here? Are we going to stay? Are we the sort of church that if we went away, people would care? As we think about that long journey, if you've been around our church for any length of time, you probably know that the way we respond to that question, why are we here, why are we staying, it is to be and to make disciples of Jesus. We believe that disciples of Jesus are men and women and children who are learning and living the way of Jesus. And in short, the way of Jesus is the way of love that moves in three very specific and connected directions. You're familiar with this already. 
a life of love with God as we receive God's love and return it to him in a life of worship, a life of love toward our neighbors. Again, if our, or if our church burned down, would anybody care? And we've tried our best to faithfully respond to that by giving as much of our energy and our time and our resources away. And of course, a life of love with one another, a place where many can belong and find community and hopefully eventually become family. And again, for the last 20 years, our church has tried, not perfectly, we haven't even done it well all the time, but we have tried to faithfully respond to that question, why are we here? And one of the ways we've done this is to try to give as much of ourselves away as we could to give away our time, our energy, our money, and our resources. And as our elders and the leadership team at our church have been praying for several years now, pre-pandemic, we've come to a place where we sense a certain level of clarity from God that maybe the next step for us is to see if we can give away some of our space. And so for us, in the next couple of years to come, that is the question we are exploring and it is the invitation we are making to you as our church family. Today, we are launching together as a church what we are calling the Here to Stay campaign with God for the good of all. The Here to Stay campaign is an invitation to anybody and everybody who calls Westgate home, anybody and everybody who has been positively affected in their discipleship to Jesus um, through the ministry of our church family, to pray and to ask God how he might be asking you to participate and to give generously, sacrificially, and in some cases even radically to blur the physical lines between our church and our city at both of our physical locations in West San Jose at the Saratoga campus and in South San Jose at our South Hills and Casa de Fe campus. So let me give you some of the details um, as we move uh, on into this teaching. First, at our Saratoga campus, if you've been around for a while, you know that several years ago, we were able to purchase the Jack in the Box lot, that dirt lot that will soon, in the coming months, become our brand new parking lot, offering us more parking spaces than our current parking lot next to the theater and the Kidstown building. And so as that becomes our new parking lot, our desire is to take our current parking lot next to Kids Town and the theater and to renovate it into a community space, to build a large, beautiful, versatile retail space there that we could lease out as a blessing to a local business for really cheap rent, uh, potentially a local coffee shop that can do some high-end coffee and attract people who could could care less about Jesus, would never otherwise step foot on a church building, and to be here on our space seven days a week. And alongside that, to build a multi-purpose venue that could be used by our church for a variety of events and gatherings to best serve kids and students and families and adult ministries, but also to be used by nonprofits and schools and other events uh, that take place in our city. And then on top of that multi-purpose space to build a four-story building where the middle floors would act as offices for our staff, our team, you may not know this, but our team is split between multiple locations every single week because we don't have adequate office space. This would allow us to be collaborative in a collaborative space together on a consistent basis. It would also offer us the opportunity to provide more space for life groups. This is a high need for us. Life groups are growing. We've got more and more of them launching, and many of them need space at church, and we just don't have that currently. It would also offer us opportunities to leverage that space for some of the more intimate spaces that we are building out in our formation discipleship pathway. Things like mentoring and spiritual direction. We've got a whole community of counselors and therapists here who could leverage that space to be able to um, pour into the lives of our church family. And then if God provides this much and we're able to build out to the fourth floor, our desire is to build a fourth floor of this building where we could create small dorm style residences alongside maybe one sort of proper one or two bedroom apartment. And that would work um, 
and it would serve uh, the, the vision and the mission of our church on a number of levels. One, it would allow us to be able to invite young up and coming ministry leaders uh, to do pastoral ministry residencies with us, spend a few years with us being trained, serving on our staff while we provide free housing. It would allow us to invite um, potential church planters who know the need of the Bay Area but can't possibly afford to live here. It would be such an amazing kingdom win if we were able to say to a pot potential church planter, come to the Bay Area, we'll offer you and your family free housing for a couple of years while you get your church up and running. In an area of the world where more than 90% are unchurched, we need more good churches. In our care ministry, we have people come in pretty regularly who are in unsafe environments. And we typically right now have to outsource housing options for them. But these dorm style residencies would, um, residences would allow us uh, to keep it in house and provide um, safe shelter for those in need on a temporary basis. This and so much more, lots of gathering space for neighbors, for families, for young professionals and college students to spend time on our campus, um, enjoying a good cup of coffee, going to an event, and really rubbing shoulders with you and me, followers of Jesus, who are here to welcome them in. At our South Hills and Casa de Fe campus, we think often about the fact that Highway 87 ends right into, it leads and funnels right into Almaden Valley, where South Hills and Casa de Fe gather. We have the Almaden Trail literally across the street from the parking lot of South Hills. We have Leland High School and Bret Hart Middle School just a block or two down the street with hundreds of students walking down Camden Avenue, passing by our parking lot every single day. So our desire is, again, to blur the physical lines between our church and our city. And so our hope during the Here to Stay campaign is to raise funds to build a small um, shipping container style coffee shop with a large seating area that as our literal neighbors walk to and from wherever it is they're going, school or a hike or a bike ride, they might see our church not just as a religious building with a big parking lot, but an in inviting space to sit, to linger, to share a cup of coffee, um, and to know that we want them here. We want our neighbors here. And again, our hope is to create physical space at both of our campuses where many can find welcome, belonging, and we pray the transformative power and presence of Jesus in and through his people. So now you might be asking, well, why are we doing this right now? And a few thoughts on that. At our Saratoga campus, many of you already know this, but recently, in the last couple of years, some significant um, real estate developers, commercial real estate developers, have purchased all of the land literally all around Westgate Saratoga. So Sandhill Properties has plans to develop the El Paseo um, shopping mall area into essentially a brand new Santana Row. High-end retail on the bottom and uh, residential, high-end residential on top. The Cato lot, which is literally right next to our current parking lot where we want to develop um, some of these plans for retail and for uh, multi-purpose space. Um, Cato has also been purchased and Sandhill Properties, their plan is to build residential on the Cato parking lot. What this means is that at Westgate Saratoga, whether we want it or not, and we want it, is our city is coming to us. Our entire city is going to converge on our little corner of the planet. We're going to have literal neighbors, hundreds, maybe thousands of literal neighbors right next door. So why now? We're doing this now because we want to be the sort of church that doesn't build walls, but builds bridges inviting our city that is converging in our corner of the planet, inviting them to spend time with us on our property, rubbing shoulders with us. We want to shift the paradigm of what people who are far from God think the church is. 
There's just a bunch of uptight religious folks who think they're better than everybody else. We want to be the sort of church that physically, visually, and relationally communicates to our city. No, we are all normal, ordinary, broken, hurting people in need of hope. And we have found that hope in Jesus. And whether you found that hope or not, we hope that you can at least spend some time on our campus and know that we're here whenever it is, if and when you're ready to take further steps. At South Hills, um, again, we've already discussed this before, but Almaden Valley is an ever-changing part of our city. Again, as technology companies continue building in downtown, more and more people are going to funnel into Almaden Valley and call it home. We're already beginning to see many of those changes now. We have two um, high-level, very populated public schools literally down the street. We have Almaden Trail, which is one of the most popular um, destinations in South San Jose for people going on bike rides and walks and runs. We have literal neighbors who are spending time all around us all the time, and we want to be ready to welcome them in. Again, to say, spend time here with us. You're welcome here. So this is a part of why. Why now? As I mentioned earlier, anytime you start to try to build new facilities or expand the facilities that you have, the numbers are really intimidating. And so it's, it was this way 20 years ago or a little over 20 years ago when we were trying to figure out how to do this and how to build. And I can remember we invited a guest speaker to come in to an elder meeting one time, and, he, and we were all asking this, these questions about how are we going to do this, how are we going to do this? And he asked this question, what would it cost you to not build? What would it cost you if you said no to this opportunity? And we began to um, take a look at that kind of a question and began to really not like the answers. It feels a little bit like, um, maybe you've seen the animated movie Up. Um, it's a movie about an old grumpy dude who's in the middle of lots of new buildings being built. and He's got this old house right in the middle and he tries to, to get out of there by tying a bunch of balloons to his home and, and getting out that way. It's a little bit like, what would it cost us to not do anything? It would feel a little bit like Up. That Westgate would, as Jay has said, look like we're building walls instead of bridges, that looks like we're, we're trying to keep people out instead of, you know, getting and bringing them in, that we would become the kind of place that um, becomes irrelevant just because we look that way. We, we've, we've decided to not look like we're blending in. Now, think about this. All of the effort of all of those retailers and all of that money is that they are trying to bring people to themselves. And we want to just kind of do some, uh, some things for us in the front that says, especially at the Saratoga campus, but also here at the South Hills campus, we want to be able to try to do it where it's, it's inviting and pulling people in. Um, that we would be the kind of church um, where everyone can know that we love them and we care for them. Now, the natural question that many of us are asking is, well, Jay, Steve, that sounds awesome. How much? How much is it going to cost? First, it's important for you to know that as we head into this campaign, a couple of things. One, it's a two-year campaign. Now, what that doesn't mean is we're going to be talking about this for two years. We're going to talk about this for a few weeks, and then we'll move on uh, in our services teaching um, all sorts of different things. But it's a two-year campaign in that what we are asking our entire church to do is to pray and to consider what God is asking of you and then make a commitment uh, at the end of this series, talk more about that in a moment, and then to fulfill that commitment over the course of two years, 2024 and by the end of 2025. So during those two years, we are taking what is typically called a one fund approach. That's nothing you need to remember. All it means is that rather than saying, here's what we need to just continue operating as a church and continue to doing all the ministries that you love and is so helpful to you. And then here's the money we're trying to give outside of our walls, what we call our loud fund. And then on top of that, here's all of the money to build the buildings and do the rest. 
Um, instead of presenting it as three different buckets and asking you to give to three different things, we're taking a one fund approach, again, just for the next two years. That as we make our financial commitment at the end of this series, that we will commit to one financial amount that we will fulfill over the course of the next two years. Now I will break it down for you. What does that actually mean? What's the total number and how will it sort of all be spent? First, in an average year, it takes about $7 million for us to do the stuff of church, to be a church, to continue moving ministries along that are um, helping to shape and form children and students, helping you belong and find meaning and purpose within the context of community to be formed more like Jesus. And to pay our staff and to keep the lights on, all of those things cost about $7 million a year. That's money that you all who give to Westgate Church already give to move the mission forward. In addition to that, Steve said earlier about that question the leadership asked here many years ago, if our church burned down, would anybody care? And we have what is called our loud fund. And the loud fund, every penny in that fund goes outside of our walls. This is the money that we spend to build wells and provide clean drinking water in Jesus' name all around the world, to respond to crisis when there's a fire or a war in the Middle East, to support our dozens of ministry partners, missionaries all over the world and all over our country, taking the kingdom of God into dark places. This is the money we use to support local educators and teachers who are serving underserved populations right here in our city. This is the money we used to shelter doctors and nurses during the pandemic who were serving 20-hour shifts but weren't able to go home, and we paid for hotels so that they could get some rest. The Loud Fund, in an average year, in recent years, we give about $1.6 to $1.8 million a, a year away. But our desire as we try to build here at home is that we want to keep radical generosity, that question, if our church burned down, would anybody else care? We want to keep that question continuing to be front and center for us. So our desire during the Here to Stay campaign is that even as we try to raise the money to build buildings here at home, we want to see if we can give more money away in these next two years than we've given away in any previous two years. So our desire is to see if we can give $2.5 million a year away, outside of our walls, to continue doing the work um, that I mentioned and so much more in Jesus' name to bring God's kingdom to earth. So $2.5 million to loud to go outside of our walls. And then if you multiply all of that by two, $7 million a year to function as a church and as a ministry, $2.5 million a year outside of our walls, over two years, um, that comes out to about $19 million. And we think our general estimate right now is that all of the building projects will cost about $16 million. So the big grand total over the next two years, it's an audacious number. The big grand total is $35 million, which again is about $17 million over our normal sort of operating cost and money that goes outside of our walls. Now here's the thing. $35 million is the goal in terms of a number, but the primary goal of the Here to Stay campaign is for us to try. And trying means that every single one of us who call Westgate home participates. And what does participation look like? Here's the invitation. For the next several weeks, pray as a family or as an individual, Pray and actually ask God what he is asking you to do. And then do that. Don't give a penny more or a penny less than what God is asking you to give. And our conviction is that if every single one of us pray and asks the Lord what he's asking of us and just does exactly that, God will give us exactly what we need to do exactly what he wants. 
and just some logistical stuff. This is between you and the Lord. Nobody except our finance team that has to actually punch in the numbers. No one else is going to know what you commit. I don't know who gives what. None of our staff do. None of our pastors. None of our elders. This is truly between you and God. So a few next steps and then a quick story and then we'll end. For the next three Sundays, um, we're going to be talking about living beyond ourselves, serving our world, and surrendering it all to God. The teaching series is more than about just building buildings, and so I would highly encourage and invite you um, to continue joining us consistently, especially during these next few weeks. On the final week of the Here to Stay series, Sunday, February 4th, it's what we're calling our Commitment Sunday, that here at South Hills Campus and at Casa de Fe and at Saratoga, we will be inviting you to bring your commitment card, which you um, either received on your way in or can grab on your way out, along with uh, the small folder that gives you more information about Here to Stay. And we're asking that between now and February 4th, you pray and ask God what he's asking of you and fill out that card. And on February 4th, we will all turn in that card together and make our commitment and see what God does through us as his people. If you're unable to be here on February 4th, um, there's a digital version that we will link for all of you guys and you can make a digital online commitment as well. Again, if you haven't received the little um, pamphlet booklet uh, and the commitment card that's inside, please grab one of those. You can always check out our website for more information as well. And then we have open question and response meetings. You can come and bring whatever question you have, and I'll do my best to respond. So on Sunday, January 28th, right after the second service here at South Hills, on Monday, January 29th, there will be a Zoom question and response meeting. And then on Sunday, February 4th, um, we'll have an open question and response meeting at the Saratoga campus. Now again, thank you so much for listening and for joining us um, in what God is up to here. I want to end by just sharing a brief story uh, and then a final word and prayer. Um, A couple of years ago, I showed up to church early one morning and I saw a young woman sitting in her car and it was a cold day. She looked a bit distraught. So I knocked on her window and asked her if she needed help. And she said she was there to meet with the pastor. Long story short, I came to find out that she was there to meet with Ben Pierce, who is our care pastor. And so I said, why don't you wait in the office? It's cold. Ben should be here any minute. And I let her inside, went into my office to go about my day, saw Ben walk in shortly thereafter and I saw them walk into the counseling office and I saw them having a conversation. And then I went on about my day and it was a baptism Sunday and we had baptisms in all of our services. And at the end of the last service that day, as we do during baptism Sundays, I made the invitation. Is there anybody here who didn't sign up to be baptized, but you feel compelled that God is asking you to be baptized today? And it was crickets for a little while. So I was about to end the service. And then out of the corner of my eye, I see the young woman walking towards Toward the tank, the young woman I had seen that morning. And then I see Ben next to her, and he's wearing board shorts, and he wasn't scheduled to do baptisms that day. So I thought, whose shorts are you wearing? But then I quickly realized that that morning conversation between Ben and this young woman had led to this woman making a decision to be baptized in, in the waters of new life that morning. Long story short, I came to find out later that week that this woman, shortly before she had come to our church, had been um, standing on a bridge in our city about to end her life. And another woman, an older woman, was driving by, saw her standing on the bridge, pulled over, ran out, and pleaded with her, please, please don't, please come down. She talked this young woman down from the ledge, got her into her car, and drove her home. And on their drive home, the young woman began to share with the older woman why she was at the end of her rope, why she felt like she had nothing left and she wanted to end it all. And the older woman, distraught but unable to adequately care for the younger woman, said, I don't know how to help you. I'm not a religious person, but I have some friends who go to a church down the street, and it seems like like they've got something. They've got some sort of hope, some sort of light in the midst of their darkness. I don't know what else to do. Can I just connect you to that church? 
And that's how this young woman found her way to our church that morning. Because a woman far from God knew that down the street was this strange co collection of religious Jesus people. But she had seen in them some light in the midst of darkness. This young woman literally walked off the precipice of death, died to her old life, and was raised anew in the life of Jesus that day. The Here to Stay campaign is not about building buildings. It's not about raising money. I didn't become a pastor to build big buildings or to raise lots of money. It's about continuing to move the mission of God through our church family forward. To be the sort of church that can be here in the darkness of our city, shining light so that when people are in crisis or on a quest, they might know that they are welcome here. And to be the sort of church that gives it away, as much of it away as possible. In Jesus' name. I'll close with these beautiful words of Paul in Ephesians 3. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen.